Welcome this morning as we worship the Lord as a very special day today in our life as we begin our Independence Day celebration for whole years and then in the 74th year that reminds us the struggle as a nation have gone through and the way we got the independence we praise God and thank God for it and in the 74th year we pray that God would bless our nation and as we culminate our celebration for the whole year this nation as we have known that uh, they're going to be a year-long celebration till 2022 15th August that will be the day 75th year so we praise God for that nations are important so we give thanks for the freedom that we have and today theme is exactly the same thank God for the freedom which we can only be preserved by discipline and self-sacrifice and of course we believe the Lord has has created nations to glorify his name that's the purpose of nations are the Bible says they who wait upon the Lord shall renew the strength they shall mount up with the wings like eagles they should run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint this is the freedom the Lord grant to his people from the word the Bible says the freedom further extended to us in Jesus Christ it says for freedom Christ has set us free to love let us be servant of one another so let us praise God as we worship the God our living God and celebrate the joy of freedom that God has provided to us in this land let us say the prayer together Almighty God to whom all hearts are open all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name to Christ our Lord Amen glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth Lord God Heavenly King Almighty God and Father we worship you we give you thanks we praise you for your glory Lord Jesus Christ only Son of the Father Lord God Lamb of God you take away the sin of the world have mercy on us you are seated at the right hand of the Father receive our prayer for you alone are the Holy One you alone are the Lord you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father Amen Oh, 
Let us pray. Lord God, Creator and Father of all, who have called us in the freedom to take part in the building of a great nation, teach us the path of true greatness, so that following in the steps of your Son, we may seek not to be served, but to serve, and to work together for the common good. To Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and ever. Amen. The responsive reading this morning has been taken from Psalm 33, verses 12 to 19. Please respond by saying, The Lord is our help and our shield. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all the children of man. From where he sits enthroned, he looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth, he who fashions the heart of them all and observes all their deeds. The king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a false hope for salvation, and by its great might it cannot rescue. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love, that he may deliver the soul from death and keep them alive in famine. First reading is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 20 to 25. I repeat, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 20 to 25. When your son asks you in time to come, what is the meaning of the testimonies and the statutes and the rules that the Lord our God has commanded you, then you shall say to your son, We were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders, great and grievous, against Egypt and against Pharaoh and all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from there, that he might bring us in and give us the land that he swore to give to our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statues, to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as we are this day. And it will be righteousness for us if we are careful to do all this commandment before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. The second reading for the day has been taken from the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 1 and 13 to 18. Galatians, chapter 5, verses 1 and 13 to 18. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Verses 13 onwards. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled with one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware, lest you be consumed by one another. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, for the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. This is the word of the God.
gospel reading is taken from the gospel according to Luke chapter 22 verses 24 to 27. A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was considered to be greatest. Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading and hearing of his word. Let us thank God for his goodness and let us pray for the world and for the church. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you have promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray. We thank you, Lord, for ourselves and for the church and for people in this world. Thank you for your living presence. Thank you, Lord, in this created world, in the nations of this world, that your living presence is there. And we thank you, Lord, for our country also, where people worship you, adore your name. We pray that you would give wisdom to the leaders of the nation, especially to our president, the prime minister, the lieutenant governor and chief minister of Delhi, and to all in authority under them, direct our nation and all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may all honor one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for our church and our country and throughout the world, especially the Church of North India for its councils, leaders, and especially and our minister. We pray for peace is saying our moderator and also Bishop of Diocese Delhi that he has taken additional charge from 6th of July. And the moderator, Dharma Raj Rasalam, moderator of the Church of South India. G. Vargis Mahathodius, the Metropolitan of the Marthoma Church. And for our presbyters, Timothy, Dennis, Jay Kumar, our lay leader, Ashish, and Anurag, that, Lord, your bliss will be upon the church through their services. Strengthen your church to carry forward the work of Christ, that we all who confess his name may unite in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for our neighbors who stay near to us, our families, our friends, to whom we work. We pray, Lord, that there will be a cordial relationship in our families, with our neighbors, that we be able to grow in your grace and your love, Lord. Give grace to our families and friends, our neighbors, and those to whom we work, that we may serve you in one another and love each other as you love us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also want to remember as you give us full and things at home, we remember the hungry, the destitute, the poor, the oppressed, the unemployed during the time of COVID, Lord. Many have lost their job. Many have become poor. Pray for those who provide to their needs. Many have died because of COVID, of old age. Give them hope, Lord, at this time that they lost, lost their dear one. And we pray that those who help them, Lord, that your presence be upon them, to the bereaved family. Strengthen up all, all those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Give them courage and hope in their time of need. 
and lead them to know the joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also give thanks to the people who have left your heavenly abode. And during time of COVID, many from our church, from families, and at large over the nations, many have left. Lord, we pray that you be with the family at this hour. Lord, guard and protect them for the losses that have taken place in the family. That they continue to remain faithful to you. They commend to your unfailing love that in them yours will be fulfilled. And we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may share with them in your eternal kingdom. Let us all say together, Hear us, Heavenstone, Heavenly Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. confess our sins beloved our Lord Jesus Christ said the Lord our God is the only Lord and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind and with all your strength this is the first commandment and the second is this love your neighbor as yourself there is no other commandment greater than these God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved by God's grace to keep his commandments and to live in love and peace with all people. Let us say the prayer together. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against one another in thought and word and deed, in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done, through ignorance, through weakness, to our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgive all who forgive one another and truly repent of their sins, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. 
Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. To Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us all say together, Amen. Thanks be to God. Let us share peace with each other. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Let us pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us say together and also with you. Good morning, friends, and welcome this to this morning's message, which is taken from Paul's epistle to the Galatians, chapter 5, verse 1, and then from verse 13 to 18. This is also known as the gospel of freedom, and as we celebrate this day, as we enter the 75th year of our independence, it is indeed a pleasure and an honor to bring to you this morning's message. 75 years ago and the world slept, India entered as a free country. Today, I'm going to tell you a short uh, story about the freedom, the gospel of freedom based on Paul's letter to the Galatians. Have you ever downloaded a free app on your phone only to discover that once you've downloaded it, it's no longer free, but you have to pay or subscribe to everything else that you have downloaded through that app. The app is only the gate and once you enter the gate, you have to pay for everything else. It happened with me once, I downloaded a game called 200 free games for the brain. But when I opened the app, there were 200 games, but to enter any game I had to pay and download another link. Something like this happened to the people who lived in Galatia, to whom Paul addressed this letter. 
Paul had been traveling and we know that he traveled on three missionary journeys and on his first two journeys he planted very many churches across the northern lands of the Mediterranean. Galatia today is in Turkey that was at that time Asia Minor and the people in Galatia were confused after the first church planting by St. Paul there descended on them some of the Jewish apostles while Paul taught about Jesus and his forgiveness and his mercy his grace and his love the Jewish apostles said yes you have downloaded Jesus but then now you have to subscribe and to what they had to subscribe they had to subscribe for the mosaic laws they said that if you don't observe the mosaic laws if you don't undergo circumcision if you don't follow the Ten Commandments then you cannot be a Christian and this was the fallacy which Paul while addressing the Galatians in this letter tried to dispel and quite successfully at that what is the big idea behind Paul's letter especially in this chapter the big idea is that gospel is the good news of what God has done for us in Christ not what we do for him but what he has done for us for we are saved by his grace through faith not by our works in this chapter the theme is freedom in Christ as we celebrate today's Independence Day and freedom from a variety of other things Paul is talking about freedom from the yoke of slavery now what is the slavery he is mentioning in I think it was the year 59 AD when he wrote this letter to the Galatians somewhere between uh, 50 and 59 AD he wrote this letter the slavery he is mentioning is the slavery or the yoke of the slavery which was imposed upon by the people of that time through the teachings of the Jewish Pharisees and Sadducees even though some of them became Christians yet they gave prominence to the laws of Moses and the very many rituals that were to be followed and therefore the first verse is it is for freedom that Christ has set us free stand firm then and do not let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery are we burdened by a yoke of slavery slavery of a different kind let us introspect today ourselves what are the kind of slaveries that we are yoked to here is the topic for this chapter that what is the freedom that Paul has in mind and what is the freedom that we have in mind we no longer try to keep the Jewish law as a means of salvation we know it's not do but as opposed to doing it has already been done by none other than Jesus Christ in his righteousness in his grace and in his mercy and in his sacrifice on the cross therefore Paul says don't be burdened by the yoke of slavery and stand firm in what stand firm in the freedom of Jesus but more about that a little later let's look at the verses 13 to 18 which are far more meaningful Paul shifts the gear and changes his focus to these three verses it says you my brothers and sisters were called to be free but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh rather serve one another humbly in love 
for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command which is love your neighbor as yourself if you bite and devour each other watch out for you will be destroyed by each other so we are called to be free we are called to be free from the burden of our guilt and shame free from the burden of having to earn our way to heaven free of trying to be good enough on our own free from the burden of our human pride and free from our own selfishness because jesus sets us free so many think of christianity as a burden many think it is stifling and restrictive and too many uh, rules and too many laws to follow it's something like when you see children entering college and after the 12th results recently many of the students from our own church and across churches and across communities people are going the children are going now to college what a freedom what a joy from what from the shackles of parental control from the shackles of school uniforms or rules and regulations from the shackles of society in general will they grow long hair now will they dress as they want or will they say yes i am in college now and i can do what i want that's what you said now christ has called us to be free but we must use our freedom not to indulge our selfish and sinful desires but serve one another in humility and love it is the freedom to serve freedom to love and freedom to do good our freedom is not an opportunity or pretext for selfish indulgence it's never an excuse to sin so what do you think paul would say to them don't use your freedom to indulge in the flesh but serve one another humbly in love christian freedom is freedom not to sin freedom is not to be used as a pretext for selfishness but freedom is to serve freedom is to live humbly freedom is to live a new life in christ jesus notice that god calls us to be free our relationship with god didn't begin with us but with him he called us he took the initiative and our salvation doesn't begin with our faith but with god's call his grace our faith is a response to his call he initiates and we respond our faith is always to his grace a response now i love this next verse it is the verse 14 for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command love your neighbor as yourself and if you look carefully at the free church logo the logo has been borrowed from this very important verse of galatians chapter 5 verse 14 love your neighbor as yourself and who said this none other than christ himself and he said the greatest and most important of all the commandments is to love god with all your got all your heart your soul your strength your mind and love your neighbor as yourself do this and you will fulfill all of god's laws so therefore focus only on one thing and that is the easy mantra for us and what is that love god love people christ's commandments love god love people as a child i used to love playing football and of course i love to watch some of the football matches and the great uh, players the international arena uh, people like pele and more recently messi and ronaldo and what players they are but what i loved about this game is what catches my fascination is every time a goal is scored 
using what is called a swing shot. A swing shot or a shot which flies through the air like a curve, like a banana. It's also known as a banana shot and it beats the goalkeeper quite often. But from this I have borrowed the phrase, instead of saying swing shot, I say swing thought. And what is that swing thought? The swing thought for today is love God, love people. We all can do well when we focus on one thing. So here is the thought, love God and love people. If you love God with all you've got, you'll want to do the right things. You'll want to fulfill the law. But here's the irony. We can't keep the law to be accepted by God because very often we are not good enough. But Christ helped us to accept God's gift. And we end up doing what He wants us out of love and out of gratitude. And our obedience in response to His grace. The words grateful and grace mean the same thing. They, their origin both in English and Greek is the same. And what is that? That when we are the recipients of lavish grace, we can't help but be grateful. And that gratitude motivates us to do what we otherwise might not do. Grace initiates faith response. Grace initiates and faith responds. And grace motivates us to do what God wants us to do. Now let's look at the last three verses for today's meditation. Verses 16 to 18. So I say walk by the Spirit. You will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Paul says, don't use freedom to indulge the flesh. By flesh, he means our selfish and sinful nature. So, by walking in the Spirit, we can overcome what the flesh desires to do. Have you ever felt inside your heart a tug of war? You feel like a shoulder, on your shoulder there is an angel sitting and telling you that do the right thing. And there is a devil sitting on the other shoulder trying to tell you that go ahead, do it, nothing will happen, nobody is watching, come on, you are all by yourself. But we know that God knows what we are doing. We are in a constant state of battle between our sinful selfishness and also between the Holy Spirit which lives within us. And to win that battle, we have to walk in the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit, being led by the Spirit and in verse 26 of Galatians 5, Paul says, keep in step with the Spirit. I think these three things mean the same. Walk in the Spirit, be led by the Spirit and keep in step with the Spirit. To be led by the Spirit means you are letting the Spirit lead you all the days of your life. And as you follow, you are keeping in step with the Spirit and walking with God. When we live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, we choose to follow the Spirit's leads rather than our sinful self. So imagine that just as the disciples lived with Jesus and followed Him, that's what we are supposed to do, living with the Spirit, because this is we. We meaning me and my helper, and my helper being the Holy Spirit. So let us look in ourselves and say we are not alone, but God's Spirit is with us. How many of us want to be more loving, more joyous, more kind, more peaceful, more gentle, more faithful, more good? and more self-controlled. We all want to do that because these are the fruits of the Holy Spirit which dwells in us. Yes, we can with God's help. Let us 
look at that freedom which Christ has given us once and for all, for all times to come, for all humanity, the freedom from selfishness and the path to love our neighbors and love God. Love God, love people. Thank you for your patience and listening to me. Let us finish by praying and asking the Holy Spirit to fill us and to remind us to walk with Him, to follow His lead and to keep step with Him. Our dear gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you Lord for this day of freedom as we experience it. You not only led this country to freedom on this very day, 75 years ago, but you led us most importantly more than 2000 years ago when you sent your only Son, our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. And when Jesus rose from the dead and ascended to be with you, you gave us the Holy Spirit. Give us the strength and courage to walk with the Holy Spirit, to keep in step with the Holy Spirit, so that we may experience your freedom, the freedom of loving you and the freedom of loving those around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us all affirm our faith and say together, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made one in being with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died and was buried. On the third day He rose again in fulfillment of the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism of the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings go. Praise Him. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, and defend you at all times. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us now and ever. Amen. This is my song, O God of all the nations, a song of peace, all lands are far and wide.
Amen.